Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're doing the next step on the end table. Uh, yeah, it's actually starting to look like something. So we're gonna take it into this and have a little fun. Let's dive in. First thing we're gonna do is laminate up the top. I have two pieces of quarter sawn white oak and we want to make them one. I'm gonna do this be at the first because I want to have time for the top to rest uh, so that it will reach its natural equilibrium together and then I can smooth it out as a whole piece. So first thing we're gonna do is joint the edge. I put the two of them together so if there's any discrepancy in my plane, it is a corresponding angle of the two and when they come together, you get a nice, really beautiful seam. Now we're gonna be using uh, some PVA glue and for that you wanna make sure you have a solid amount of clamping force. You can't actually squeeze out the glue when you're using PVA. Uh, the more force, generally the better. You're gonna damage the wood long before you damage the glue joint. Uh, so squeeze it out and you'll be much, much happier if a good joint that'll last a lot longer. Once we take it out of the clamps and uh, we can start cleaning it up, I get most of the, the major glue off with a bad chisel and then I can come back through and scrape the joint down nice and flush. And these were actually pretty close. Uh, I got these boards um, S2S so they, they came together rather well. Just clean them out and we're going to set that aside. It's bigger than it needs to be in all dimensions. Now we're going to move on to the carcass itself and start making these stretchers. Uh, the stretchers are all going to have through tenons through the legs, but in order to do that, they have to pass each other. So the ones on the front and the back will have a tenon that's high and a tenon that's low, and the one on the side will actually just have one tenon that comes through. So they actually pass each other inside the leg. So we're going to start by laying things out. And the nice thing about this is I can use the exact same marking gauge set up for all of them as long as I mark them off of the same reference face. So even if I'm doing the, sh the small tenons that are on either end, I'm using the exact same mark as I am if I'm doing the one large tenon. I'm going to be using a, a dovetail saw for most of this because it is small detailed work. It leaves a much cleaner surface. And if I stay away from the line a little bit, I'm going to have to come back and chisel it back to clean it up. That's completely normal and uh, actually works out really well, especially if you aren't quite as accurate with your saw. You can stay a hair away from it and chisel back. Just understand most of the time the problems come when you're actually chiseling, uh, not as much from the saw work. So then for the cheeks of the large tin, we're going to use, oh, check this out, a tenon saw. And uh, I need to sharpen this one. It's having all sorts of weird issues. Uh, but I always need to sharpen this one because it's one that I, I put off. I don't use a tenon saw that often, but when I do, uh, it's very, very useful. Then we can bring in the carcass saw to cut down the shoulder. And there we're left with our large tenon. This will be one of the stretchers that goes from side to side. We want to make sure it's clean and straight. You can put the side of a chisel on there and it'll let you know where it's high and where it's low. So you can come back in and shear off those high fibers. So you can use a shoulder plane, or in this case, I generally just use a chisel um, to clean it back. If you really want to, you could use a router plane as well. On the front, there is going to be a drawer opening. So the stretcher that goes across the front is actually two stretchers, one on the bottom and one on the top. And those will just have a small tenon that goes through the leg and passes over the large tenon coming from the sides. So these will be the, the front stretcher, stretchers? The pieces? These things. <laughs> uh, the same thing, except for in this case, uh, it's just a two-faced tenon as opposed to a full four faces. So we're cutting uh, two cheeks and two shoulders, and that's it. Uh, because it will be resting all the way up against the top and bottom, I don't care as much about uh, making sure it's, it's perfectly gap-free. And uh, I had to be very careful on this one. This is 100-year-old oak, and it's a little more brittle than I would like, um, especially if you cut past the line a little bit too much like that. And I ended up breaking one later on. Um, I had to come back and actually... Um, um, make a whole new one because it, it broke. So you can see how they will pass through each other inside the leg and they're exactly the same size to match in and then they will come out the other side of the leg so you still get that through tenon look uh, but with the full length coming from both sides. And I really like that I'm doing something like that. I've done a bunch in the past. At this point, I want to redo all my marks so that I know which way is up and which way is down because now that I've cut the tenons, that really doesn't matter. If my tenons are a little sloppy, that's okay. As long as my mortises match the tenon, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna set reality here. I'm gonna slide the stretcher all the way up to the top of the leg and then mark off the sizes of the tenon. I'm gonna put my, my, uh, my mortising chisel on the board and I'm going to mark the width of the mortising chisel um, and I actually made the tenon to be the same width as the mortising chisel as well and so I can then set my pins from my mortising gauge up um, to those marks that I just made into it as opposed to try and balancing the mortising chisel onto the end of the mortising gauge 
uh, that's just a pain to try and get those to work together. Then we want to transfer these lines all the way around. So I'm going to put a nick in the corner and then transfer it to that face, put a nick in the next corresponding corner and then transfer that around and I can get all of these marks to go all the way around the leg. Because they're through tenons, I'm going to need that same mark on all sides of the leg. Uh, in this case, two of the sides will get the large tenon and two of the sides will get the two smaller tenons or mortises. For the chopping out, I prefer to use um, the, continue, the continuing chisel method. Uh, this way you start at one end with the bevel facing the far end and you continue to march along it, each time going deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm almost all the way through uh, by the time I reach the other end. Uh, for something wide and thin like this, it is, it's an absolute pain to auger them out. You just end up drilling so many holes and there's chances for more problems. It is much, much, much faster to just chisel it out than it is to, to bore these out. Now, in doing the smaller ones, uh, it actually might be a little bit faster to bore it out because I'm only going to have to drill three holes as opposed to like the 17 I'd have to drill for this one. Um, so each mortise is different. Sometimes I drill them out and sometimes I don't. I want to make sure that it can slide and then we take it for a test drive. And in this case, it fit right off. Uh, some of them I needed to come back and do a little bit more work and sometimes it's easier to adjust the tenon. Sometimes it's easier to adjust the mortise. Um, just look at it and find out where it needs to be. As long as you get a nice clean exit wound on the other side, you can make that happy. So now we got to make uh, the other two mortises for the smaller tenons to come through. I, I do want to make sure that my fit is very nice and tight that takes a good bit of pounding uh, because that allow, that will give you a far better glue joint. In this case, I'm not going to be doing any draw bore tenons. I thought about doing it, but in this case, I'm just going to glue it up. It's, it's an end table. It's not something that's going to have a lot of force put on it. Uh, but having a really good tight joint will actually give you a far better glue surface uh, that will last much longer. Now, the nice thing is with the short legs, the tenon is open on the top, and so it's actually a bridle joint, not a mortise and tenon. Um, but this makes it a lot easier on the top one. I can just cut down the sides and then pare out the waist. But for the through tenon on the bottom, uh, that one's a little more difficult. And then the back legs are taller, so I'm going to need two full through mortises uh, for the back legs. For the front legs, it's really easy because these just pop out. I'm going to stay away from the line as long as I can, um, but then once I get most of that out, then I can come right back into the line and chisel it down. The Flip the board over and then come at it from the other side, and that way I'm not uh, doing anything uh, from both sides. Also, you can see there's a, a bit of a gap where the two of them cross paths inside the leg. And we want to have that so that the two of them basically meet. We'll be gluing one tenon to the other inside of the joint. It really won't add that much of a strength, um, but it lets you know that your tenons are the maximum size they can be and therefore the strongest they can be. Sometimes it, you get a lot of junk in there, and I find it really easy to bring in a, a, a flat blade screwdriver, and you can use that to pry out the waste or pound it out the other side on a through. Also want to make sure we clean out any of the junk in the bottom so it's good to come through and pare it out. We can test these pieces. The one that has the through tenon, uh, well, this one fits through really nicely. The other one actually then comes in from the top, and you can tap it down as opposed to tapping it over, and you get a nice fit there. So now we have our front stretchers, and then we can put in one of our side stretchers, and we can kind of get an idea of how this leg will work. And then it's just uh, rinse and repeat. Got to do it on three more legs. But I really, really like the uh, the through tenons crossing like that. It's just an aesthetic that is, is very pleasing to me. I love being able to see the joinery and in one look know exactly how it was all put together. That just makes me um, very very happy. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the legs, including the two long ones in the back, because those are in the middle. But that means we have to take it all apart, put them all aside, and we're going to end up putting this together and taking it apart, putting it together, taking it apart several times, because there's several more mar um, spots we have to mark and, and do all of that. The next big step we need to do is taper the legs, and I want to start the taper about a half inch below the stretchers. And so in that case, I'm actually going to make a mark on all of the legs, knowing where is the bottom of the, the, the stretcher going to land, and then I'll put a mark a little bit farther down. On the ends of all the legs, I'm going to come in a quarter inch so that I end up with a one inch square in the middle. And that's all the marks I'm going to need to mark this. I put a mark on the end and then a mark at the beginning. And I come in with a scrub plane and I start at the tip and work back a little ways. And I get it down close to the line. Then I'm going to come in with another one and just connect the dots from one line to the other. You can see how this will come out. Scrub plane it close to the mark and then come with the other plane and smooth it out. Some of these you end up going against the grain and so you need to set up the mouth nice and clean, but you end up getting a really nice taper on these. 
Uh, it's one of these things that is so much faster to do it by hand than it is to set up a jig on the table saw, and you can really get a clean setup very, very quickly and very, uh, very simply. I have a whole video dedicated to how to taper legs by hand. Uh, it's one of these steps that, with hand tools, it is incredibly surprising how fast and easy it is. And all you need is a mark at the top of the taper and a mark on the bottom end of the leg and you play connect the dots and you've got a taper in between. Uh, a lot of people will then put a little uh, carving detail around to signify the top of the taper. I just like to leave it alone and actually give a nice smooth transition from one to the other. Next thing I need to do is put this together because we need to start working on the top and get the top to be the exact size to fit into this and it also needs to go through the top, uh, the back two tall legs. So that means putting it all together again. And then later we're gonna take it all apart. And then we're gonna put it all together again to put some marks on the tenon so we can pedal them off. And then we'll probably do the final glue up. Actually, we'll probably put it together one more time and take it one apart. And you, you get going good at going back and forth and back and forth. And uh, it, it's nice when the, the, the joints kind of work themselves together and they burnish each other together. So by the end of taking it apart and putting it back together, you get a really nice, clean feeling joint, uh, especially if they're very tight to begin with. Uh, by the end, you get a really smooth joint. Um, if you really have to pound on it, put some uh, uh, protective boards on there. For the actual um, crush and to fit, I'm going to use um, some clamps that will squeeze it to its final size because now we need to put the top on and I need the top to be exactly what it needs to be for the sides. And so that means uh, we need to actually get the base to be its exact size. We're gonna joint one edge perfectly straight and we're gonna use that as our uh, reference edge to then mark one end. And I know I've got about a half inch extra slop on this so I'm gonna cut off about a quarter inch on one end. And uh, with the square on there, making sure not to move it, uh, we can draw our line across there. Then we can take this over to the saw bench and cut this off. This will give us a second line that is exactly square to the first reference edge. Um, it's very important to get your reference face, a reference end, and a reference edge because then you can measure everything off. If we need to make this, if we need to make the tabletop 24 inches long, well, we have to have a reference end to mark off. So then I'm gonna come back through and freehand um, shoot the end, I'm not worrying too much about the fuzz on it as uh, I'm gonna be able to uh, chamfer these and, and clean them up. The other end was almost exactly what I needed to be. I only needed to shave off about a 16th inch. So I just jointed the other end down to the lines. And then on this end, um, actually ended up only needing to take off about an eighth inch on most of it. And, and this was actually easier to plane it off than it was to saw it off. So we're going to put our mark on here. You can see, ooh, I came really, really close to that point. But in this case, you can just put it up in a leg vise and then plane it down to those marks you just made. And it's really, really fast to do it with a low angle jointer and shoot the end. Uh, freehand shooting is much Which easier than it top. sounds. Uh, it is, is very well and very easy to do, especially with a low angle plane uh, that's sharpened well. It, that's the most important thing. You've got to have it sharp and it will do very, very well. You can freehand sharpen um, surprisingly easy. I have, a, I have a few videos on it as well. Now I need to label this thing. Of course, it's top. So now we need to get measurements exactly from this top because the top has to have two square holes that fit down in. And so I'm gonna use a set of pinch rods here to then measure out the diameter, the measurement between the legs because that's the most important thing. Then I can set off the, uh, the measurement that's the thickness of the legs off of the ends of the pinch rods. Um, and so then I have the, the two sides of the leg. And then I can measure um, I can actually bring it over here and lay the bench on top and put the exact measurements on here, setting up my marking gauge to then ride uh, that mark that I, that I put into it, making sure that the marks are all straight. Um, I hope that makes sense. Use reality whenever it's possible, either with pinch rods, story stick, or actually setting the piece on top if it's possible to do that. So some of these marks, I can just put the leg on here and know that this is my starting point, so that's my other side. And I can make sure my hole is precisely the exact size as the reality of my leg. And some of these, I'll just make a mark, and then I'll set up the marking gauge to match it and then come back to it. Now I need to uh, remove most of the waste with the drill and so I'm going to use up, set up some dividers first to find the middle of it and uh, find an exact spot to start with. Uh, the, the hole needs to be an inch and a half in diameter 
But if I use an inch and a half auger bit, I'm, I'm probably going to run into something. So I'm going to back it off an eighth inch uh, and, and use an inch and three eighths auger bit. This will give me a little bit to work back to the line, but it will save me when I uh, when I make problems. Speaking of which, we need to drill it out. Uh, it's very important to clamp the ends so that they have a little bit of support. Um, because you don't want blistering anything out when you're working on something small. In this case, I've got about an inch of wood all the way around, so it's pretty decent, but every now and then you're going to bust things out. So I'll drill from one side, drill from the other, and then you get these really nice little plugs when the, the bit is sharp. I love how those things come out, and they're, uh, they're kind of fun to play with. <laughs> yes. Um, so now we need to chop things out. I'm going to put a uh, sacrificial board underneath, put in some holdfasts, lock it down, and we can start chiseling back towards our line. Stay away from the line as long as possible. Um, again, try not to split out small pieces because you're working pretty close to the edge. Um, the smaller the chunk, the smaller the bite, the better. Less chance of splitting something out, less chance of going past the line. Just keep working it back closer and closer and closer to the line until you get right on it. It's very important to keep them sharp. This one I let get a little bit too dull as I was doing a lot of shopping, uh, chopping, but that's all sharpening. Right? What you saw there was the entire sharpening process. Just turn around, 30 seconds on it, go back to work, and, and you're good to go. Uh, if you have a, a setup that, that works well and you can do it freehand, that's all it takes to sharpen a chisel. And it's really, really nice to, to keep it up with that. If I stay on top of it, I'm just going to hit the strop rather than taking it to the stones. But sometimes I let it go too far and I have to take it back to the stones. It's kind of nice to come in with a file, clean up any burrs or edges that are coming out, any splinters that are coming off. And we want to make sure the top edge of this has a nice crisp edge because the top edge is what you'll see. The bottom edge, if there's any gaps on that, no problem at all. Now here I want to be very careful when sliding it all the way down. Um, I'm supporting the other end with my with my uh, hand so that it all comes down nice and easy. And uh, there, that's where we're going to get from this one. And ooh la la, oh man, I'm in love with this top. This is this is going to be a fun fun build. <laughs> so there you have it. An end table. Uh, now we still have to make the top shelf and all the hash work and the drawer and uh, you can see why there'll be more videos coming. So hopefully next time we'll be putting in the slides and making the drawer and actually getting the bottom half of this working. So yeah, that's the really fun part where you actually make the drawer and everything fits in and happiness. So we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see more, I'll have a link to the whole playlist down below. Now if you're watching this sometime in the future, I will have plans available for this. If you're watching this current, I'm sorry they're not out yet. Uh, but if they are, you'll see links to those down in the description. Uh, so yes, um, it's coming along and I'm really, really liking how this is coming out, especially with all of this quarter sawn white oak. It's just, it's gorgeous and I'm, I'm really looking forward to putting finish on this. It's going to be one of those that just uh, explodes with color. So I hope you like this. If you do have any other questions, comments, ideas, snide remarks, let me know those down in the comments down below. Putting comments down below does actually help the channel. So thank you for doing that, as well as hitting the like and subscribe and sharing. I say it every week, but honestly, those do really help out the channel and help us get in front of more people. So thank you for that. There all are also a bunch of people scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. They're the ones who are literally keeping us going. We are, we are sponsored completely by you, the viewer. With patrons on Patreon, people who have clicked that little join button and become members here on YouTube, you are the ones who literally keep us going. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about that, there are links to Patreon down in the description, or you can click the little join button and become a member here. We have special perks for both, as well as watching the live going on while I'm building this. So on that note, I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This particular project reminds me of the circus because it's going to have a small top, but it's also got a big top. <laughs>